lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, it's your get it done mindset of the day, and it has everything to do with those of you out there that always say, why do I attract the wrong people? Have you ever had that testimony or heard somebody say to you, it seems like I always attract the wrong type of people? Well, I'm going to clear that up for you right now and help you understand one of the components that you have to get under control before you even start looking for somebody that resembles what it is you would like to have as opposed to what it is you keep getting. Your get it done mindset of the day says this. If you don't love yourself, you will always chase those that don't love you either. Mm. You hear me? So if I don't love myself, that means I don't know what I like. I don't know what I don't like. I don't know what I will take. I don't know what I won't take. I'm just out here because I don't believe that I am deserving of the best of anything. So therefore, whatever comes my way, I'm all good with it because I don't feel like I should get anything better than this. If I don't love myself, I am always attracted to somebody who will not love me either because love has not become a norm in my life love yourself family check that then get it done you hear me i promise you you will attract that that you are Mm, said something that time right it is your boy lonnie hunter with your get it done mindset of the day for more of the same you can check me out every saturday night 9 p.m to 10 p.m on the impact television network Yes, sir. The Lonnie Hunter Variety Show. It is on and popping. So hopefully you will be able to check it out. I love you for real. Now let's get back to your program. And baby, it's your favorite station with your boy Lonnie Hunter. I got to go. Just the way I walk, walk. Then set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost No, I'm not perfect, God just forgave me Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy This my Christ swag, yeah My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay My Christ swag, yeah This my Christ swag, yeah My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag My Christ swag, yeah Yeah, I'm from the street South of the arch, man Where I used to drink, roll up and used to spark, man Now I got my head straight Shining like a million bucks Christ elevated me Going past the ceiling, bruh St. Louis City God Squad t-shirt Homie, how you doing? Please to meet you, this my rebirth Addicted to the word It's pumping through my artery Faith on the meal The swag is a part of me Now my glow bright Souls been redeemed Covered in the blood No shower, cause I'm clean Done playing games Rid of the Xbox, almost flatline, but Christ made my chest pop, walked on the edge, the devil made me wobble, Jesus took the wheel, fast forward, full throttle, still in the hood, got that street slang, mixed with the spirit, it's a G thing. Keep high talk, talk, check the way I walk, walk. Been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect, God just forgave me. Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, yeah. Okay. yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. God squad, this my bruh. Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, God, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Look. Uh, my whole style come from Christ yeah. So own it, no sir, you can't put a price Like white on rice, I got his blood on me To be honest, I just care about my guy, homie And if I'm only living for him It don't really even matter what y'all think of me Opinions, you can let them be I'm killing it, I let them see The old me is gone Keep the demons on my heart Then Christ find a home yeah. No more Patron or Nitrous I might just give God a praise with my best He's highest, glory in here, hallelujah, yes sir, 
Put my trust in the Lord, I ain't having no fear No, I don't have a care Besides pleasing my father Tell any hater you see man Don't even bother Cause Jesus is my medicine I ain't never hurting Catching waves of his glory Man, I'm Christ swag serving yeah. I talk, talk, check the way I walk Been set free Cause my father paid the cost No, I'm not perfect God just forgave me Got a new swag Praising Christ like I'm crazy This my Christ swag Yeah my Christ way, yeah, uh-huh. this my Christ way. Okay. Nah. My Christ way, yeah, this my Christ way. Yeah. My Christ way, yeah, uh-huh. this my Christ way. God squad. My Christ way, yeah. La, uh, okay, I get it from my father uh-huh. Head to toe, swinging on that word, that's the model yeah. Used to be a up or down, flipper like the lotto uh-huh. Roll with big drink and ST, old squad uh-huh. though uh-huh. Now I'm uh-huh. aiming at the world with that blessed go yeah. Hard repetition, stay flexing, holy rollers know uh-huh. When you see that light shine, this ain't baby doe He ain't got a VVS on him, what a freak show uh-huh. nah. No, but I'm close with my father though yeah. I ain't Leroy, but the boy got a lot of glow, took a whole lot of land out to kill his ego, uh-huh. missing my whole purpose like Shaq with some free throws, uh-huh. if you rap in vain, can't edify the people, uh-huh. swag on 100, gaining speed, adios flow, and I'm top flow, uh-huh. reaching for his glory, you think I got some swag, Christ the one that poured it on me, I talk, talk, check the way I walk, walk. been set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost, no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy, this my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way, okay. My Christ way, yeah. This my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way. My Christ way, yeah. Hey, good evening, good evening, everyone. <laughs> welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> Hope we've all enjoyed this, another beautiful week that God has uh, blessed us to be a part of. And I want to welcome you back to Relentless Pursuit. You know, this is where we are, relentlessly pursuing our dreams, pursuing the visions that God has given us, pursuing a, a better relationship with Christ here today. Uh, I just want to take a moment out and say again, Sister Kimmy, thank you, God bless you, and we appreciate you, and I want to appreciate everybody who's listening. Well, today we have started back up. We kind of get this back together in the month of August. We know we're going to be talking a little bit about race relations, and hopefully um, we'll all glean from this, glean something new, and we can build some better, stronger relationships. Um, As I was studying today, just reading up a little bit. Actually, just a few minutes ago, I gotta admit, I don't wanna, I don't wanna pad this and make it anything less than what it is. But I certainly was reading today, and what I was reading was it came out of Colossians. I believe it was Colossians three, thirteen and fourteen, and it, um, it said, "Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you." And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Just to set this up, I mean, we know that there's a lot of things going on around the country. And I tell people all the time I love the fact that I was born in America and I can consider myself an American. I served in the military, did a whole bunch of things, right? But more than that, I love being a child of God. And I love hanging out and loving on children of God, right? But I also love the ones who don't know God the way that I know God, right? So with that being said, I just wanted to say to everybody, you know, the greatest of these is love. And and I want to get to a point in my life where I know that I absolutely love everyone, not just in word. Let my actions speak for me, right? And so today, um, I want to just take a, a quick moment. Just just a just just a pause for a few seconds here, just for the people who've lost their lives in the last few weeks due to hate in our country, due to just people just for lack of a better way of saying it, wilding out, losing their doggone minds. And so 
I just want to just have one quick moment, and I won't take long because I know on the radio, ten seconds could sound like a long time. But if you don't, if y'all don't mind, just just bear with me, and 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 and, and just in spirit, in your thoughts, or you can pray out loud to yourself. Just say a quick prayer for the family that are grieving right now. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Okay, so today I want to go ahead and get started because we got a couple of things we want to talk about. And hopefully, 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 again, that we'll glean from this. Uh, this is, I pray that this is the first of many, 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 many shows that we do on the topic. But I don't, I, I want the topics not to be about division and separating us, but bringing us together. And, you know, sometimes <laughs> it takes awareness. It takes awareness to overcome a thing. So um, here in my life, I've experienced some things that were that have negatively affected me. Some was, I mean, there are all kinds of uh, prejudices, but today we're talking about race. So because of my race, uh, because of friends of mine, we've all, a lot of us have been discriminated against. And for one reason or another, whether you're black, you're Hispanic, you're uh, Asian American or just Asian, uh, no matter where you're from, even when you're white, you get discriminated against at times, right? And just all walks of life we do. So today we want to talk a little bit about racism. And before I continue to go on and on, I want to introduce again, I got my boy Jason here with us. If we can bring Jason on. And then also we have Terry here with us today. And Hello. We have, uh, this, hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> we also have Terry on with us today, and then I want to also bring in, this is the first time he's been on with us, but I want to bring in John, and what I'd like for you to do, John, since you're the first one, you're the you're a newcomer here, just kind of introduce yourself for us, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Take a few seconds to do that, if you will. I sure will. Uh, my name's John, and uh, I pastor a, a small church over in Middletown, Woodland Church. It's uh well, thank you for the applause, studio audience. And um, I've uh, I've been in the um, uh, community mental health counseling and, and ministry field for over 30 years now, and uh, have been uh, uh, working to uh, try to grow the church, build the church, uh, help Christians uh, develop a closer walk with God. And uh, just lately, as I've been talking with uh, Cedric and Terry, um, God's taken me on a journey uh, about um, recognizing uh, my place in um, in discrimination and and and, and racism through uh, through really ignorance and white privilege. And I've been having discussions with Terry and Cedric, and well, they've been really helping me get a better grip on. Uh, how as a as a white man and a white minister, um, I can um, I can overcome that individually and help other people see their way out of that uh, that tragic trap that unfortunately uh, keeps so many other Americans um, uh, down in so many ways. Yeah, thank thank you. I'm you know what. <laughs> Uh, I got to tell everybody, I mean, just, just hanging out with, with Terry and John for a few days that I have, we've had some wonderful conversations, and we definitely, and I know that some of it's going to spill over in today, and it's just going to be, I want everybody to, 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 to glean something new from the show. As I, let, let's go ahead and go in. Today, like I said, we're talking about race in America for the entire month of August, and, and today, I wanted to have someone other than our usual selves on because I want to see it from a different perspective. And also, I have questions. Terry, you there? I just want to make sure you're on with me. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. All right, good. Good to, good to hear your voice. How, how you doing? How was your week? Doing good. It, was, it went very well. Right, well good, good. Jason, you there, right? All right, so, so I want to set it up really simple. And the scripture I gave is going to apply to the end of the show. I just want y'all to know. But but today, 
really, uh, as a group here and as a discussion, I'm concerned about 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 the state of race in America. Any of you guys got any opinions on that? Because I, I, I read a lot of reports and, and, and I read a lot of magazine articles and I hear what they say. And if you talk to, to Joe Blow over here who's in a middle class America and you ask him, what's the state of race in America? He'll say, ah, yeah. But if you ask Joe Blow over here who's in upper middle class, he'll say, oh, it's perfect, it's fine. And then you go to the extremely lower class area, poverty stricken areas, you, oh man, it's not so good. So let's start off by by each of us, if you will, just uh, kind of give me your thoughts on uh, the status of race here in America today. What do you well, think I'll about it? I'll go ahead and get started with that one. <laughs> I, right. I, I really, I really, I really believe that the state of racism in America has really uh, shown even much more clear than, I mean, than in modern times, should I say, that the original sin still exists. Hmm. And when I say the original sin, sin, I'm not not necessarily talking about Adam and Eve, but I am also, you know, that's a part of it, but I'm talking about from when, um, how the country was founded, how uh, the Native Americans were mistreated, their land was taken from them, but so forth and so on. That type of thing. It, it just goes back to all of that, and and now um, with the current state of racism in the country, it was it was during the uh, uh, President Obama's administration that a lot of that was uh-huh. kind of really start brought back out again. I mean, it's always been there. It's always racism has always been there, but it even became mm-hmm. much more uh, became more vocal. Um, uh, during his administration, especially with the birtherism pieces and things like that, and and then now yeah. where we are yeah. now, we're dealing with a, a a a person in that office, in the office of the president, that has his, his rhetoric, his, his belief, everything, just fans the flame of racism, and it makes mm. people feel like it's okay. For them to just kind of walk up to people and tell them to go back to where they came from, or to, or that you are a, you know, you're a nigger, you're this, you're that, and and and, and that whole amplification of uh, like what John was mentioning when he was talking about white privilege, that's even become more prevalent. Um, it's always been there, but now it's really visible because there's somebody in a in a leadership position now that pushes that. Yeah. So, yeah. That's where I believe we are. <laughs> that's where you okay. Okay. Well thank you, Chair. Um uh Jason, John, you the one you wanna wanna go ahead and share with us what your thoughts are? Yeah, I'll okay. I'll Take jump it. in. I I I agree with Terry that uh in the current administration it's just become uh almost approved. Uh, yeah. By the actions of of the current administration and the the things that they say and and the things that they don't say and how they seem to gloss over so much, it's given a um, it, it's given almost a, pre, uh, a a permission for individuals to begin acting out. Sadly, what so many of them believe and haven't felt that they could act out before. Uh, I think especially yeah. in the in the white community, you know, we see that with the shooting uh, suspect in El Paso who uh, was intent on on uh, going in and 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 killing Latinos, uh, you know, and wanting to make America white again. Um, <laughs> uh, and ain't that, ain't that something? Ain't, ain't that something? It's, uh, it's extraordinarily <laughs> sad. Jason, did you want to add anything, or because uh, I, I got a question here that just came to mind? Yeah. Um, before we move forward, I, I think the current state of race relation is, um, I mean, race has always divided us as people, and we talked about this a little bit last week. That if you read biblically, um, there's only one race, and that's the human race. Um, yeah. But you know, discussing last week, race is a social construct. Um, we've created this thing that further divides us. And what we're seeing now is that division coming out. And 
I would, you know, kind of just just reiterate the sentiment that it's always been there. You know, I don't think mm. what's happening today is something that wasn't 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 around before. It's just now there's a sense of boldness about it, a sense of hey, let me now act on it. And I will tell you truthfully and honestly, I like it better that way. Because now, if you think about it, we would have probably never had this conversation. You know, we would all not be here together today if it wasn't so out and about prevalent, making it something that we can no longer avoid or push in the dark corner and act like, well, that's only a few people. And, you know, we'll just kind of push that away and act like it doesn't exist. So um, I believe that we, we are in a very divisive time um, in our country, but I don't believe that it's any different from where we were 20 years ago. The only difference now is it's more out there. It's more prevalent. Yeah, People are paying more attention to it. <laughs> well, well, I got I got something to say to that, but uh, I'll wait a minute. I, see, and, and hearing each of your, 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 you guys' points on this and the way you feel about race relations in America, because I, I, I really do feel like that we are at a place where really right now I believe that we're at a point of no return, meaning there's no more hiding this. There's no more covering it up. I mean, you would have thought that back in the 60s, you know, with, with, with how the civil rights movement rolled through that, that, you know what, we can get this right finally. But I believe that today with the way things are right now, I believe that you cannot put the genie back in the bottle. Now we got to deal with it. We opened up Pandora's box. Now we have to deal with it. So my next question, and John, this is especially for you. I just want to ask you this. And 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 uh, Terry or or, or 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 Jason, please feel free to piggyback off of what John says. But I, I the question I have, and 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 I ask you this question, John. Uh, one because of your statement, but two because here. <laughs> You have, you've lived a life that's a little different than what we've lived. So, how does that make you feel, knowing the things that are going on right now? How does it make you feel that that you know what? One day, I saw this for what it was, and it's not right. How does that make you feel, knowing your entire life you've gone through life, and yeah, maybe you recognized it, maybe you didn't, but I know you didn't after talking to you, so you didn't. How does that make you feel right now, though? The first emotion that I experience, honestly, is anger that mm. um, that we, uh, uh, the human race, uh, but particularly uh, the the white race, uh, have for so long indiscriminately um, placed ourselves above each other or, or above others. Uh, for no other reason than the color of our skin. And um, I, there, there's so much backstory that I've shared with Terry and Cedric about my experience and um, yes. and, and never having, uh, you know, I want to say never having recognized it. I, I've still got to evaluate whether or not that's honestly true within, within my own heart. Uh, but having gotten to the point where I am now, and seeing the things that are going on and, and reliving the things that have gone on in the, certainly the last, you know, four or five years, the first, yeah. the first emotion is anger. And, and, you know, that's, you know, what's funny, John, is you experience the same emotion that I myself, I personally have experienced so many times in life, anger. And, 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 and I realized at a young age, I was told this, and it says when you're, they used to tell me all the time, when you get mad, you can't do anything. And, and, and I used to get frustrated about things. But finally, you know, I'm well into my 40s now, and I realized anger is great. It's good. It gets the fire started. But you can't do anything when you're angry. And so I have learned to calm down. And one of the things that I was really um, – that I really was glad about, John, is that you were willing to sit down and talk with us. That was the most wonderful thing because one of the things I noticed about myself, I could talk about this topic and not be angry. I could talk about what happened in El Paso and not be angry. I could talk about what happened in Dayton. I could talk about a James Byrd. Uh, people don't remember 
uh, out in, in East Texas, out in Tyler, Texas. That's the, the basis for the James Byrd Law, where two guys who knew a black guy, and they all went and got drunk together, and at the end of the day, they tied him to the back of their truck and dragged him down the street to his death. You know, I used to get angry about things like that, but there is hope in this world. So, uh, Terry, Jason, anyone y'all want to piggyback on this? Because I, I can take over the whole show. You know how I am. Now, I, I think, you know, uh, Pastor John kind of alluded to it, and I think uh, we have to start having conversations about, you know, recognition and what we see and what we don't see. And I think the conversation has to be about mindset. And I think this goes across the board. You know, as as an African, as a black American, I can't have the mindset that everything is against my race. You know, but on the opposite side, there has to be a mindset that if I hear a bunch of people claiming something's going wrong, how do I how do I truly, you know, you know, process that information? And I think what we're seeing in America is, is, is just a mindset where people are seeing things, they're, they're, they're experiencing things, but their mindset is, is not allowing them to truly vet it out for what it is, you know, a bias. Hmm. I think that's a better word, you know, like for me, you know, um, I may walk into a situation and I may be getting sideways and then I get treated, but it's easy for me to say, oh, they're doing that to me because I'm black. Well, no, that's my mindset. Now, let me recognize that, hey, maybe I did do something aggressive. Maybe I did do something out of order. And maybe I did. But I think, you know, if we're really going to start talking about healing races, we've got to start with the individual. Mm-hmm. And I, we, we got to start looking at our mindsets and how we process information, you know. Because, um, like I said, it's, it's easy for me to say, well, I got mistreated in this situation because of the color of my skin and really dismiss some of my actions and behaviors, you know. Just like it's easy to say, well, well, I know everybody is saying this is real, but is it really real, you know. And, and I think, you know, as, as, as we talk more and more, we, we need to have our conversation uh-huh. and start evaluating where our mindsets are. How are we processing information? Can, can I say, mm-hmm. can I chime in? <laughs> can I chime in? Go ahead. I, go ahead. Go I, ahead. Think part, I think part of our, part of our problem and part of our issue is what something what Jason was saying. I, I have, I'm going to use a different slant on what you're saying, Jason. Um, is that um, it's the lens in which we view view the world. Our lens has been has been fogged tremendously because okay. of what our parents experienced, what our great grandparents experienced, and even what some of us have experienced. In life, uh-huh. and so you view it through your you view life and the world through your own lens. Same way with like with John, like with John, he views life through his own lens. He never experienced a lot of the stuff that we've experienced before. So therefore, when things happen, it's not readily visible. Does that make sense? Mm. Okay. Mm. And so, but but when we view it because of what we've been through and what we've experienced, we see it. And tag it real quick, but part of the part of one of the things I'm glad about this conversation that we're having is that John he called me and uh-huh, said, hey uh-huh. Jerry, let's do lunch let's talk some things some things have been on my heart and he was able to say you know something my lens has has, has not been correct if that was can I say that John yeah absolutely. Yeah, my lens has not been the way I've been seeing the world. The way I've been seeing race relations has been huh, not right. And so, for him to be able to do that, I applaud him. I honor him because to have people like that say, so, you know something, I'm not. My lens is cloudy over here too. That's great. But we need to, like you said, like you said, um, Jason, to a certain degree, we need to look at our lens to make sure that what through our lens and say, okay, is everything that we've been seeing. Uh, uh, valid as well. Um, so, our, uh, so, yeah, go ahead. so when we talk about, because my favorite, I know my two of my favorite words, complicit bias, and I will get into that later. But, 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 so, so I know where I'm at, and 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 going on the lens with with what you with what you and Jason talking about, profiling is is is, is a huge thing today, right? It, it's huge, but it seems to only affect some of us. And, and and I guess my thing is, 
John, again, by you being the newest guy here, I got to throw this out at you. What is your view on profiling? I'll get Terry and Jason, you guys can chime in after, but what, what is your view on profiling? Does it exist? And, and I'll tell you what I'm trying to do, John, because I'm really not trying to put you on front street, sir. I, I really want to see it through your lens, and let's talk about it. That way, nobody's angry. Nobody's treated badly. So that's, that's the reason I'm asking you that question. Sure. Had you asked me that question two years ago, I would have probably vehemently denied that that was a pervasive problem uh, mm. in law enforcement particularly. Uh, mm. But um, certainly over the last six months to a year, uh, I would say I've, I've turned around 180 degrees on that. Uh, again, using the example of a lens, um, you know, uh-huh. God, God, God told me to take my glasses off and clean them, and and yeah, yeah. put them back on so I can see things a little more accurately. And and God's been God's been working in in me in this for some months now, even before I came and, uh-huh. and asked Terry to meet, uh, and uh, has laid on my heart that I've got a responsibility to my own community to help mm. the people that are in my circle recognize that we've not been seeing things right. So, so what are some and of we, the things we, that you've seen? So uh, I, I, and I, I apologize I, that you weren't finished, but, but what, what are some of the things that you've, that, that you've actually noticed yourself? Well, it, it, I, I'd say a lot of things I've gone back and, and re-looked at. Um, uh-huh. uh, you know, all of the different... Um, uh, shootings of, of particularly young black people that have happened over the okay. last several years. Uh, even yeah. the example that you used of the gentleman uh, in Texas that was dragged behind the vehicle, when you said that, that, that rem- I remember seeing that on the news. And I mm-hmm. would have never looked at that as a racial thing. I would have looked at it as a bad thing, and somebody broke the law and did a horrible thing, but I would have said – even probably to you, that wasn't because he was black. Um, <laughs> I understand that. God, uh-huh. Yeah, God, God is 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 laid on my heart that that in a in an effort of repentance in my own life that I've got to help other people see that uh, that we are just the human race. Uh, hey, I think man, Jason cool. mentioned that a little bit a little bit ago. And that oh, yeah. uh, that I have a responsibility, I have a responsibility mm-hmm. to the people that God's placed under me, that that I shepherd and and, and that I interact with, uh, to let them know that that certain behaviors and third, certain thoughts are no longer appropriate uh, and no longer acceptable, and that we have to begin living our lives. Uh, in the manner where we treat everybody with equality, no matter their race, no matter their gender, no matter their sexual orientation, God loves them all. That's and right. we need to do that too. And, 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 and he wants to heal all of our wounds, even if one of those wounds is hatred, right? Uh, he wants to heal everything. And, and my, my, my thing is, as you were talking, uh, uh, John, as you were talking, I, I was just sitting back and I was thinking that, that some of the things that have gone on in our community um, that that a lot of people don't see. I know when you and you Terry and I were together, we talked about redlining and we talked about how um, they put predatory lenders out in lower income communities. But you know, race also was a thing. It, it became bigger than just the color of your skin at some point, especially in America. Right, it it, it 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 really became about power at some point, um, economic power. I mean, think about it. it. We say that slavery is all over. We say that there's no more slavery. But if you go and look in our look, look at our penal system, we find that there's still a legal form of slavery. When you put on that prison uniform, that's a legal form of slavery. And in the '90s, you know, we always hear about it. We always hear about it. In the 90s, they started mass incarcerating uh, young black men, right? But, of course, it started in Calling the 80s. Calling it the war on drugs. <laughs> yeah, they called it the war on drugs. 
after they put the drugs in it. I'm sorry, I don't want to make this about that. But uh, but the the point I wanted to get at is this right here. John, have you seen that 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 that, that being white or uh, and, and Terry and, and Jason, please chime in if you like. But have you seen that that being white does it help you get ahead at all in life? Because I know I talk to I talk to some young black men and and these young black men say, well, you know what? I mean, if you ain't white, you can't get this job. If you ain't white, you can't do this. You can't. Do this. I personally, I get so sick and tired of hearing it. But I know that our communities, a lot of our communities, have been beat up, beaten, uh, <laughs> beaten down, and that's what they come up with. He got the job not because of his qualifications. Have you seen that? Have you experienced that in your life at all? N- not, you not that, that I'm consciously aware of. You know, not that I'm consciously aware of. Uh, in working in in health and human services for uh-huh. uh, almost 20 years, I did a lot of hiring, and and r- you know at least consciously, race was never a criteria in my hiring. It was the ability mm. to work with the kids and and manage the kids and and having that personality to deal with uh, you know a tough population. Uh, and and I can't I can't say that. Knowingly, in my own life, I've I've received a job or gotten a promotion simply because I was white. But I can't say that that hasn't happened. Mm. So it so it still kind of lurks out there. And the reason I asked that question oh, John, is again, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I, and 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 I and I and I think, you know, when we when we when we start talking about race and 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 you know and and the different experiences. Um, you kind of harped mm-hmm. on it yourself. It's a mindset. I don't believe I can get ahead yeah. because of the color of my skin. Now, that may or may not be true, but if that's a mindset I have going into a situation, then it is going to impact how I respond. If I'm a young, if I'm a young black man thinking that I can't get ahead if I'm white, then I'm going to walk in that interview already thinking that I don't have the job. Whereas if I walk in thinking, hey, if I put my best foot forward and I'm one of the best candidates, I'm going to get a fair shake, that's going to, that's going to affect how I even present myself and how I do the things. And, and so I, I keep harking back to mindset because it's, it's, yeah. I think it's a really important thing. And, and, I, and I have a question for you, John, you know, just, I mean, sure. I definitely appreciate, you know, where you're at and you said this, you know, where you are today as opposed to maybe even last year, you know. And, you know, when we talk about profiling and how you said that you didn't think it existed, you know, and this is a question – that I can't answer because I've experienced it in my life. You know, I'm probably the less threat, the least threatened person that you've ever seen, but there's times I've been profiled and I recognize it for what it is. I don't get upset or mad about it, but I, I see that it's there. Um, my only question is when you hear, you know, um, countless people say this exists, this exists, this exists, this exists, you know, how are you processing that information? You know, when you hear, like, countless communities saying we're being profiled, we're being mistreated by, you know, because of the color of our skin. You know, someone who, for me, it's easy for me to process because I'm like, well, there's truth to it because I've experienced it. But for someone like yourself who's never experienced that, but you hear countless arguments, and I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about numerous arguments. How do you, how do you, how do you rationalize that in your head? And how do you um, hear all that information? and then come out with the conclusion, like, if it does or doesn't exist? Well, I, I, I 100% believe it exists now. Um, right. Having, uh, you know, having done a lot of reading and, and paying attention to media and, and certainly talking with people, um, you know, my, my question is, and, and something I'm, I'm trying to solicit from my conversations with Terry and Cedric is, what can I, as a middle-aged white minister, do to make a difference or an impact in that today? And, 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 and so the reason why I ask you the question, John, is because you say now you believe it. Now, before today or before you know, this 180-degree change, you didn't believe it. And, I, I, and, I, and, and one of the things that you know, my suggestion is understanding that mindset. You know, you've got 30, 40, 50, 100 people telling you this exists. 
and you hear that from a hundred different voices, and how does a person hear a hundred different voices across different walks of life say something exists, but still come to the conclusion that it doesn't, you know? And without that that 180 degree change that you've experienced, you know, when you go back to your community, you're probably going to, you, I mean, you, you've heard it, you know, you, like you said, I never believe racial profiling exists, but I mean, to be truthful and honest, there has been complaints about racial profiling for decades, but yet and still those complaints fall on deaf ears. So the question, you know, to answer your question, how do you make a difference is that, you know, you've got to understand like, how do you hear these complaints, but don't give them, credibility, you know, to come out with the same conclusion that they don't exist, if that makes sense. It does. So, and, and that's what yeah. I'm rest, that's what I'm wrestling with. How how can I now, as I see through a different lens, uh, help others clear up their vision and recognize the things yeah. that we haven't necessarily experienced uh, are real things that other people experience on a daily basis. You know, in life, generally, if it doesn't happen to me, it doesn't exist. <laughs> that, right. That's our selfish, you know, individualistic mindset. It's not real if, if I don't experience it. Yeah, and and, I and we have to begin looking. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. Well, we just have to begin looking, looking at life through other people's experience. And, and I think mm-hmm. that's hard to do. So I would tell you one I, of the I, toughest things that we see in race relations right now is I have, I, I, I have, I have friends who, you know, are different, are different racial backgrounds and racial makeup. And when we have this conversation about racism, the thing that I'm told the most is that it doesn't exist. And for me, there is a feeling that I'm being that my feelings are being dismissed, and it, it, it's like you said, like if it doesn't happen to me, then I don't I don't acknowledge it. You know what I experience sometimes is if it doesn't happen to you, then it's not real. So when someone brings that to your attention, and they say, "Man, this is what I'm experiencing," it's like, well, no, you just it's not real, and it's almost a dismissive attitude. And I think we've seen a lot of um, um we've seen a lot of I think that 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 has caused a lot of animosity between race relations, you know, because how can I have a conversation with somebody when they're telling me that my feelings aren't real or my experiences are invalid, you know? And if we're really trying to fix this, it has to go both ways, you know, and I have to be able to hear that, man, you know, Jason, maybe sometimes you're making a big deal of something. And I got to be open to hear that, but just on the opposite side, you may be open to hear it, like maybe you're not giving enough credence, you know. So, you know, I, I mean, I, I definitely, I, I definitely, I, I like what you're saying. I like where we're going with this, but I think if we're really, truly trying to affect change, we've got to affect how people. It's hard if I, even if I communicate my experiences and what's happening to me, if you're not uh-huh. receiving them or actually giving them validity, then the conversation really goes nowhere. And we're, we're kind of back in the same spot we've always been in. We're just, everybody's just talking, but no one's really listening. I, I think that I, I get that, and I think I think that's a part of 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 what we can what can we do together, you know, to be able to heal these wounds and to begin to start um, seeing each other on on an equal playing field. I think you know I think that's what you know John mentioned earlier in his. Um, in his uh, statement that, you know, he realizes now, hey, you know something, if I see something, I've got to be a voice of, uh, to address the injustice. Does that make sense? Um, and, yeah. and not only him, but we've got to be able to do that as well, but we've got to do it from a place of non emo like what Cedric was talking about, where it's not emotional. You know, it's a passionate subject for us all. We've got to make mm-hmm. it so... I think it's one of those times you draw. My mother always told me you draw more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. <clears throat> We've got to be able to. <laughs> you see it. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. You know, and, and we got to be able. To, we, we, when we when we are addressing it, and we and we want these people to change. We want people to be engaged. We can't come on in with like a machine gun, bam, 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 and shoot them down. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because we know, we yeah. got to understand, okay, they're not seeing us from the same lens I am. So let me see what I can do to help to create an environment to where we could come together and have these discussions and, and they and, and they learn they begin to learn me as an individual and learn that this may be passionate. You know, I think one of the things mm-hmm. that John had um said to me before we first got started, he said, Terry, I know it's gonna be a very hard discussion for me <laughs> You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we're, we're gonna be bringing out some really tough and sensitive stuff. You know, and, and he realized that, you know, something Terry may come off half cocked on this one. You know what I'm saying? But right. we can't do that right. if we right. want to That's engage right. of the larger community. And, oh, and, 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 and Terry, right. I, I agree with you. And, you know, we, you know, I don't think, I, I, I think the passion piece, the anger piece needs to be society. But I do believe that. As human beings, we all know what hurt and pain feels like. And I think the hurt and pain that is suffered through the racism that we've experienced and we grow up with, I don't think that anybody should be shielded from that. Because I think when people start to feel that this is truly hurtful, you know, this, this, this is not just, oh, I'm being, feel like I'm being mistreated, but this kind of hurts me. And as human mm-hmm. beings, if we all can experience that same level of hurt, then it makes it more real for us, you know. And it's okay, that sense okay, of empathy. Okay. I'm not saying that we don't get to that point. There's been times where we've had some passion, and, but I'm talking about. But John had to. But John had to get to know this side of Terry, because before he only saw the professional side or the preacher side. He never saw, you know, how Terry felt about racism. He didn't. He didn't know any of that stuff. But so I didn't want to, you know. So my thing is, I wanted him to get to know me. You know what I'm saying? So. That when time comes, when we have to have these tough discussions or we have to talk right. really frankly about things, John yeah. knows me now. I remember I talked about that yesterday, guys. Because we've had these got, get to know me, I have to back up on some stuff. I can't allow my passion to drive me to the point to where I, I isolate other people that I'm trying to reach. You can't do that. So what I'm trying to say is, is that it comes with – Sometimes us having to take a step back, we understand okay, say, okay, you know something? He's looking at this from a different lens. Okay, I can't go in at this. If I go in it like a freaking bulldog, I'm going to drive him off. But if I get it, let him allow him to know me, get to know me as an individual, as a man, an African-American man, then it's going to pay off in the long run because when it's all said and done, he's going to be like, you know something, Terry? That was a tough discussion, but I know you. And, and you know what's funny about that? What, what, what I'm hearing from everybody, what, what's really funny about that, and, and I shouldn't say funny because it's not, it's not funny, ha-ha, I made you laugh, but it, what stands out to me is that as, 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 as we're all talking, I'm thinking, you know, that's the beautiful thing. God made all of us different. And, and I, Jason and I were talking last week, and, you know, God has blessed our scientists with the knowledge to, to to look at our DNA and find that the difference in humanity, right? We're talking humanity, right? We're, the difference in our DNA is like 0.02%. That's it. We're like 98% the same. I mean, we're the same pretty much. You cut me, I bleed just like you bleed. My blood is red. My arterial blood is a bright red. My, my, my you know, so my skeletal is a, maybe slightly different from yours. It may be a little lighter, a little heavier. It doesn't matter. My question is, now that we know that there's a problem out there, we recognize it's a problem, what are we going to do to fix it? How can we help ourselves? How can we help ourselves change, not just for our own good, but for the better good of our communities? Because I'll tell you this, and this is something I truly believe, that as each of us changes, we change the environment around us. What do you mean? You know, if I was once a hoodlum on the street and I stopped being a hoodlum on the street, I don't hang around the other hoodlums, right? When my kids start to grow up, I train my kids up a little differently, right? I train a child up in the way that, oh, man, in the way that he ought to go so that when he gets a little bit older, he's not going to depart from it, right? I want to introduce him to God. I want to introduce him to the healthier things in life. And, and so how can we do that? 
because this is a this is a tough discussion, and I know we're only surface level, but this is a tough discussion. How can we do it? Because as as being black in America, and you guys know this, uh, when you look at the TV, and and I see shows, and I see YouTube videos, and I see all these things of being black in America. Honestly, as a black man in America, I'm like, man, it's tough. But then I start thinking, I haven't experienced it quite that bad, but I look at the subtleties that I've experienced. And this is where the complicit bias things comes in. When I go into certain stores and I'm dressed a certain way, people kind of, you know, the, the, the all of a sudden the security comes out. They don't look like they're in security, but they look like regular shoppers, but they kind of keep an eye on you, or they make it a point to come up and talk to you. You know, I've shared these things. How do we overcome that? How can we change our communities? See, that's where I believe we are on this phone call. We are at a point where we're all saying we notice what's wrong. How can we change it? I, and are we I truly believe to the charge? Mm-hmm. I, I, I truly believe, like, we change it by connecting on the point that we, that we are. We're human beings. And I heard like what point? Time, uh-huh. I heard somebody say something one time, and, and I really love it. We impress people with our strengths. We connect to people in our weakness. And I truly believe that every human being feels certain things like fear, like hurt, like pain, like some of those, like, and even the positive emotion, joy, happiness, you know, and I believe that that's something that, that can transcend color or skin. So when we talk to each other, we've got to be able to make ourselves vulnerable to share those emotional things, whether positive or negative, and be able to embrace it. Now, we can't, you can't go in, like Terry said, and start blaming people or it's your fault and attacking people. That's, that's not how we connect. But I should be able to go to anybody and say, man, this treatment that, that I'm getting really hurts me. And they can be able to see the hurt and pain and, and kind of maybe not, maybe not experience it because they've never seen it, but understand what hurt and pain means in, in their life and empathize. Like, man, I know what hurt and pain feels like. Man, what can I do to help, help you? deal with the hurt and pain? What can I do to change the environment that's causing the hurt and pain? You know, and I think mm. that goes both yeah. ways. You know, I mean, and we've got, we, those are the conversations that we have to have. Is just, we have to have real conversations, you know, about, really about the impact. Because before we start talking about, hey, we need to do the X, Y, D differently, if we don't yeah. agree there's a problem, then we can't really come to, we can't come to consensus of what the solution is. But if we can agree that, man, the, the way we're acting toward each other, and this, is, this goes both ways, you know, the way we're oh, interacting yeah. as a race as a whole is causing so much hurt and pain and, and just oh. all these things in us and be able to discuss them without getting defensive, without, getting, without pointing fingers, without blaming anybody, um, then we can start having a conversation of, wow, you know, what can we do to change that? Because I think as human beings, None of us want to deal with those negative emotions. We all want to try to, you know, exist in and create for other people those positive emotions. And mm. once again, like I said, it, it, it's, it's, it's that connection that I think is going to bring us closer together. Mm. So that connects. So, so I can agree with what you said, Jesse. What, about, what say you, Terry? You, you want to add a little bit to that? What can we do to facilitate us growing closer together so that we can help to start changing our communities? Again, I think Jason hit that. Um, it's about relationships. And actually, my, one of the things that we can do moving forward is really begin, like I said, treating the human race as the human race. We are, as you said earlier, you know, we all believe the same, you know. But the thing about it is but, but begin to develop healthy relationships and be able to, so that we can be able to have these, these discussions. Um, I think going forward, I think that is going to be key. Um, so, so be like, like, like with like with John being here, it's going to, it's going to now it's going to take my effort, my um, effort on my part, not just to say, John, you go out and get somebody. Well, you know, let me go out there with you. Let me let's 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 go as a tandem. Let's go to share what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. those are little things. Like yeah. That. Mm, John, you want to add to that little? Uh, yeah, I agree with Jason, too. I, I think it's time for us to get away from the cognitive conversations, you know, the the uh, sitting down at the round table and 
trying to produce solutions for things that we don't even believe are a problem. Uh, and, and I think that uh, Jason hit the nail on the head where he said it's all about relationships. We need to we need to sit down and, and break bread together. We need to get in each other's homes. We get, need to get to know each other. Uh, we need to experience ministry together. We need to experience failure together. We need to see each other's lives and, and to be able to uh, at least visually, uh, uh, you know, um, a, experience maybe uh, something that, that happens uh, to a black person or a brown person that generally doesn't happen to me. And I'm not going to ever see that unless I'm in the midst of it. And, and I think being in the midst of each other's lives is the key. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I bet I can I can summarize what we're all saying here. So, so, and we got a couple of minutes left here. But, but you know, think about this. Think about this. We're four guys on a telephone, and we're saying, I can show my neighbor some compassion. We're saying, I can show my neighbor a little love. We're saying, I'm going to do whatever it takes to understand the situation. I'm going to walk them out in their shoes. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to hold their hands as we walk, right? Amen. If we can, if we can do that right here on just a one-hour phone call, right, imagine how many people we can touch. You know, there's this thing I often say, and I've heard uh, – uh, I think it was Eric Thomas who talked about it, but he said one day you got 24 hours, you got 1,440 minutes, we have 86,400 seconds. One day. And he always asked the question, what are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? Because one day we're all – I believe we'll see it. Our kids, we may not see it, but I believe that our kids can one day see a world where, again, like Dr. Martin Luther King said, where we'll be judged by the content of our character and not by the color of our skin. A world where I, as a black man, don't have to tell everybody I'm a black man. A world that I, as a Hispanic man, don't have to keep talking about I'm going to go to Mexico or Viva Mexico or whatever we say, right? A world where if I'm from Hawaii, I just say I'm, I'm Hawaiian. I don't have to worry about my race, my skin color, because this, I believe, is driving this world insane. We're trying to – have you guys ever met somebody who had little to no confidence? Remember those little bullies on the playground? That's what our oh, world yeah. is coming to. <laughs> That's what our world is coming to right now. That's what I see. The bully on the playground, he makes the most noise. He does the most uh, uh, bolstering about everything. But deep down inside, he's always the weakest one. <laughs> he's always the weakest one. Why? He can't take criticism. If, if, if he doesn't have a good argument against you, the first thing he wants to do is beat you up physically because he's probably the biggest guy, right? You know, he, he, his vocabulary isn't strong. He can't outthink you because he hasn't trained himself to think. So he's untaught, and, and a lot of people are like that. Now, it's not to say that all racists are like that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that what we have to do, we have to get together. We have to understand one another for being human beings, and we can defeat anything that comes our way. I, I truly believe it. Uh, uh, that scripture I read earlier, uh, Colossians, uh, I think it was Colossians 3, and, and it was uh, verses 13 and 14, you know, when I read that earlier before uh, before the show, when I, when I read that, man, I started thinking about something. It says, bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. How many of us have been wronged in this world and we're big enough, we're godly enough to be able to say, I forgive you? Whatever wronged us, whoever wronged us, you know, that's the same thing, how we can heal from, from these wounds, from, from the wounds in our society today. That's how we're going to heal. How many of us can do, just like in verse 14 where it says, and, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. How many of us, Jason, you, you, you touched on this particular part, and, and, and love is that thing, that compassion wells up in us, and we feel for our neighbors, and we want to go out and we want to help them with everything. My thing is, starting today, I think each one of us wants to 
make a change in our environment. We want to make a change in our community. And so right now, this is just what it is. It's a call to action. John, you are on your way. Terry, you're on your way. Jason, you're on your way. Cedric, you are on your way. I'm saying we have to do this together. We have to do this as a team because if we don't do this together, where are we? Where are we? We're going to be lost. So with that being said, I know we have about 30 seconds left. I want to uh, go ahead and close this out here. Anybody have a 